as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. From all evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever. And ever. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Now direct your attention to our spiritual mind treatment. Have your bulletins. Open your bulletin to our spiritual mind treatment. We begin reading together. One, two, three. Let's begin. The words that I speak are my love good, and they will produce the desired results because they are operated on by a power greater than I am. Good alone goes from me, and good alone returns to me. This word is for me. Everything I say is for me and about me. There is one life, and that life is God. That life is perfect, and that life is my life right now. My body is manifested with the living spirit. It is created and sustained by the one presence and one power. That power is flowing in and through me right now, animating every organ and every function of my physical being. There is no congestion, no confusion, and no inaction. There is perfect circulation, perfect assimilation, perfect elimination, and perfect action. I am one with the infinite rhythm of life which flows through me in love, harmony, and peace. There is no fear, no doubt, and no uncertainty in my mind. I am letting that life, which is perfect, control me and flow through me right now. I am a master. God made me a master. Nothing outside of me will allow to master that power inside of me. It is done. It is complete. Because of this, every day, in every way, I am richer and richer and richer. I now express life. Eternal life is mine right now. Spiritual affirmation. No state except announce. Amen. Now let's turn our attention to our statement of faith, which is adjacent on the next page. Let us begin reading. I have reached a place in my life where I have decided I want more of God. I realize that for me to have more of him, there are some things that I choose not to do anymore. In this regard, it's best defined as the point in which I tell the devil it's over anymore suggests that what was has concluded and what is is new is about to commence anymore celebrates the fact that there are some mistakes that I won't make ever again anymore says send Satan a memo that reads I know you are a thief but you cannot have anything that belongs to me anymore. I know that change is inevitable. My progress is optimal. Today, in the name of Jesus, I choose to make progress. With this in mind, I boldly declare, I won't let this giant live anymore. Now, come on, let's give God a great big hand clap of praise and a make an affirmation. 
in my statement of faith. And at this time, we're going to turn further service over into the hands of Reverend Michael Glover and the choir. Come on, clap your hands for our choir. Come on, we could do better than that. Let's encourage them as they sing songs of Zion.
I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign upon the throne, for you are God and God alone. 
Because of you, my lonely days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. You are God. want to say that I love you more than anything. I just Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Come on, quiet, because, because you care for me in such a special That's why I lift you up. what we come here to do. Praise him. Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's the one. Praise him.
worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. We Anybody happy to be here this morning? God is good, isn't he? Brought us through another week. Brought us to another first Sunday. We're going on the other half of the year, headed into a new year. He's looked beyond our faults and supplied our needs. Many have fallen by the way, but he still got us on this side of the Jordan. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here. Amen. Through many danger, toils, and snares. We've already come, but God's grace has brought us safe thus far. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but even in the midst of the trials and tribulations, I still feel safe in his arms. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We honor God this morning and to all of our officers, our ministers, deacons and our deaconess and mothers. We thank God for all of our mothers this morning. Mother Mentor, God bless you. Amen. Mother Kane, God bless you this morning. Uh, Mother Arrington and Mother K. 
cows. God bless you. Grateful for Mother Watson. Back on the door. Amen. Her brother-in-law went home to be with the Lord. And we're praying for her sister and mother and that family in the name of Jesus. We're praying for the Mosley family, Jeremy and our Mosley and uh, Damon Mosley who lost their mother on the other day. We're praying for Chris and Don and Tasha who will be funeralizing their loved one this week. We're still praying for the Kelly family. Amen. Amen. We're still praying for Lillian and her family. Praying for Geraldine and the loss of her uncle. And then tell me she lost her nephew, uh, her cousin, on the other day. So we're praying for their family. Amen. So much is going on. Praying for Reverend Davis' family and the loss of his aunt. Amen. I think in Kansas City, praying for them. God is still good in spite of all that's going on. He's still in the blessing business, isn't he? To those of you who are streaming with us, we thank God for you. And we're praying you. Praying for you, amen. Mother Hunter, we're keeping her lifted up. And all our mothers who are not present, to all of our members who aren't present, to those of you who are sick, wherever you are, we got you lifted. Amen. We love you. We pray that you will continue to stream with us. And if you are being blessed, amen, we ask that you would please continue to send your tithes and your donation to 17330 Finkel, Detroit, Michigan, 48227. Or you can cash app it at dollar sign, New Jerusalem Temple, or Givelified at New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. We're playing, praying for Deacon Ferguson and Mother Ferguson. Amen. So many sick. So many grieving, but God is still good, isn't he? I say he's still good, amen. And he's worthy of all of our praise, amen. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of your Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. On me, no, fall on me. Please, Senor, no. for you. Say it. God has 
smiled on me He's been good to me One more time, I'll leave you alone God has smiled on me He has set me free somebody he's been good yes he has he's been good he's been good yeah so good so good he He's been mighty, 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 mighty good. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. I don't want to keep you long this morning. There's a word from the Lord in Matthew's chapter 11, familiar passage of scripture. And let me say this before I read this scripture. Um, last week I talked about at the intersection of expectation. Anybody remember that? and disappointment. We talked about the boys on the boat and uh, how they went through with Jesus on board and waking him up and what happened in that story and how sometimes when we're in those storms, those situations happen where we're at the intersection of expectation and disappointment. Well, I preached from this story many, many times. And Nate, generally when I preach from it, I talk about the doubt that John had in this lesson. Doubt dilemmas. But I saw the same thing in this lesson somewhat as in the lesson last week. So I, I still want to talk about at the intersection of expectation and disappointment. That's what we're going to talk about today. But we want to show you what the Lord showed me, if you don't mind. And I ain't going to be long. In this 11th chapter of Matthew. Y'all got me? You understand? I understand where we're going. And it's in these first three verses um, where John, it says, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his, his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? At the intersection of expectation and disappointment. I want to talk about that predicated upon John's question. 
should we look? Are you the one? He, he it, it, it seems as if he's at the intersection. Are y'all with me? All right, that's what I want to talk about. You might be seated. You know, we, we talked about last week how many times that all of us have been at the intersection of expectation and disappointment we, where we expect one thing and we get another. Where you had hoped your children would turn out one way, but they turned out another. Where, where you've been trained, Don, for the position, but they give it to somebody else. Where you had hope <laughs> that your marriage uh, uh, would work out, but he or she walked out on it. You've stood, many of us, at that intersection of expectation and disappointment. I've come this morning hoping you would listen to me for a minute. Lonnie, sometimes God must tear from us what we love wrongly, unreasonably, and excessively. That, that that hinders his love. And when he does it, uh, we cry like children. When the children cry mad at your mama, because mama won't let you have something. Do you remember when you were like that? Thought mama was the worst person in the world. That's how we type of despair yes, we have towards God uh -huh. when he's tearing those things away from us. And we cry against him like we cry against our mothers. But God lets us cry and he saves us anyhow. He, he must tear from us, <laughs> he must rip out of our hands uh, 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 what we love wrongly, unreasonable, and excessively. God, my brothers, and I hope you're listening to me. I, I'm, I hate school is out tomorrow for the... <laughs> For the uh, for the Bible class, the pew perspective, because I really would like to jump into this with you myself. God got to take from us what we think we can't get along without. He got to strip. From us, that that we think, Miriam, that we must have. And he got to do that so, so that God is all we have left. Y'all with me? And listen, when you wake up and discover, Mama, that God is all you got left, I promise you. God is all you need. I wish we could talk about that. Because <laughs> some of us think that we can't make it. Folk that left us, God didn't call. We still mad with God. Still grieving. Some things that had happened, we still mad. But God's trying to make us recognize I'm all that you need. Brothers and sisters, listen, too much preaching 
too much Christianity has been going on without bruises. We, we want to hear the preaching that don't hurt. We want to be Christians that don't get and have to go through August anything. It, 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 if a Christian does not have any scars, any bruises, any Christianity that does not have any scars or bruises, any faith that has not been challenged or disappointed, pointed, if you have that type of faith, it's not worth holding on to. If that's the type of Christianity and God you want to serve, you ain't going to make it. Because you got to go through something. Because if God, listen, if God uses us greatly, then he got to hurt us deeply. Gonna say it. If God uses us greatly, He's gonna hurt us deeply. This matter of disappointment and expectation, those of us who've been Christians for years know that you're up one day. And you're down the next. One day chickens, the next day feathers. One day sunshine, and the next day rain. Some days laughter, and other days tears. Your children make you proud of them one day. And the next day, they break your heart. Grandmama used to say when they small, they on your knees. But when they get grown, they on your heart. Yeah. If there ain't one thing, it's another. Trials and difficulties, good days and bad days, that's all a part, Gene, of being a child of God. Because God is not in our debt to make you ha be happy about your days. I'm going to say that again. I said God has not come through Jesus Christ to make us happy. But he came to make us holy. It ain't good sometimes. I just don't feel right sometimes. But God ain't came here to make you wake up happy every day. He ain't come put sunshine, y'all ain't got to hear me, in your life and make you smile because you brushed your teeth every day. God came here to make us holy. And to make us holy sometimes requires bruises. Listen, those of us who were raised right, your parents, when they whipped you, Anybody know they, they, they say, well, I, I'm doing this because I love you. In the back of your mind, because you wouldn't say it out your mouth. You would say, if you love me, why don't you leave me alone? I, 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 you can't get anywhere that's worth being without some bruises. Are y'all with me so far? I, I, I need some people here who've had some bumps along the road. I mean, that you got yourself into. And then God got you out. I, I wonder if there's some people in here who made some decisions that you wish you had not made. That you traveled some roads that you wish you had not traveled. And if you could go back in your life and look in your life at slow motion, <laughs> there are some things you will pull out. 
I wonder if I got anybody listening to me. There are some things that you would edit out of your video. But those things, my brothers and sisters, have served to make you the person that you are right now. All the stuff people still talk about me about, I say, thank you, Jesus. Because if it hadn't been for the bumps, I wouldn't been smoothed out. <laughs> Listen, those things have served to make you the person you are right now. Because if you had not had those struggles, you wouldn't be as close to God as you are right now. Take a moment. You got to do it now, but take a moment. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and when you get a chance, just uh, look at your life in slow motion and see the things that happen that have served God's purpose to make you who you are. I wonder if you're listening to me. All the things I, that you've done as messed up as they've been, right. have come to mix you and make you what you are right now. That's why Paul says all things work together, hallelujah, for the good of those who love God and those who are the call according to his purpose. His purpose is not always clear but his purpose is always right. I wish I had somebody. Sometimes God does not show his hand right away. Yeah, uh, 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 God doesn't, yeah, do what we expect him to do. Because, listen, we got to recognize just because God is reliable does not mean that God is predictable. <laughs> his reliability does not equal predictability because God does whatever he pleases to do to make us like Jesus I wish I had some help now 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 now, now let me get to this test real quick get you out of here to really to, to really see what John was dealing with Nate you got to look at this uh, in John, Jesus was born, yeah. yeah, and John was the forerunner. Y'all yeah. know the story of Jesus. Mary and Elizabeth, yeah. cousins. Elizabeth was pregnant six months in front of Mary. Yeah. When Mary came to meet Elizabeth and greet her, uh -huh. uh, both of them was pregnant. But the Bible says that when they approached one another, that John leaped in his mama's womb. He wasn't born yet. It, it, it wasn't just a baby feeling a baby. He shouted in his mama's room because he knew who Jesus was before he was even born. Are y'all hearing me? But in prison, watch this. He knew who he was before he was born. But in prison, he's disappointed. <laughs> now, now, his question, and this is what I want to deal with. His question to Jesus by his disciples is, is born out of doubt? Or is it? Because that's what I've been preaching. But I looked at it again, Doc. And I found out it wasn't born out of doubt. Mm -mm. Because I just mentioned he knew who Jesus was. <laughs> before he was I wish before he was born. He 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 was there when Jesus Christ walked to the Jordan to be baptized. Matter of fact, he said to Jesus, I need to be baptized 
by you. And Jesus says, suffer it to be so that the scripture might be fulfilled. John was there. He saw the heaven open up. He, he was there when the dove descended and lit on Jesus' shoulder. Uh, uh, he heard the voice, hallelujah, of Jesus when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm real. He, John knew who he was, but in prison, he's disappointed. He, he, he's disappointed. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, <laughs> me and you can be locked in prison. I'm talking about the prison of disappointment. Have you ever been there? And when you get there, Lonnie, you forget everything that you thought that you, y'all ain't got to say nothing, that you thought that you knew. Now, let me tell you, <laughs> here's where John's disappointment was born. You got your Bibles? It was born in Matthew 3, beginning with verse 7. This, this is where his, his disappointment was born. I want you to look at that. Matthew's, the third chapter. Beginning with the seventh verse. You got it? If you got it, say amen. Because I want you to see this. He, it, it says at that seventh verse, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his the baptism, he said unto them, O generation of viper, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruit and meat are worthy for the repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. He said, for I say unto you that God is able of those stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also and, 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 and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes, hallelujah, I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with fire, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Y'all see that, don't you? Now look up. John, after reading that, John, Chris, expects Jesus to come and lay an axe on the root of the tree of bad religion. Y'all ain't get it. <laughs> he expected Jesus to come stop some stuff. And here Jesus was preaching. Y'all ain't got it. He, he expects Jesus to burn some folk up. Yeah, yeah, cut them down. Y'all ain't with me. And here Jesus is healing. He, he expects Jesus to destroy the law. And here Jesus is running around eating with sinners. <laughs> he, he expects Jesus to come and baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire from heaven. <laughs> he wanted them to destroy some Negroes. <laughs> destroy bad religion. Stop the stuff 
that was going on. It's disappointment, not doubt. Can I say it again? It, it's, it's disappointment. He was mad. Y'all ain't with me. He knew <laughs> who Jesus was. <laughs> wasn't no doubt, Audrey. But he wasn't disappointed. He wasn't in, he wasn't in doubt. He was disappointed. <laughs> you see, the answer is in the question. <laughs> Our parents used to do that to us. Ask us questions. And I already knew what the answer was. Anybody, any brothers is married, your wife do that to you sometimes. They ask you questions like, you going to put that dish and leave it there and not wash it? The translation is, you're going to wash that dish. <laughs> Let me tell you one I get. Let me tell you one I get. Let me tell you one. This one I get, man. you going to wear that? Translation is, you need to take that off. <laughs> here one, here one, here one. Y'all don't mind if I get y'all. Here one. <laughs> My car needs some gas in it. Now that ain't a question. That's a demand. That, 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 you, <laughs> that's the way women do. They make demands wrapped up. With requests. Brothers, don't y'all leave me here. Here one. Is your mama them coming for Christmas? You know, they really don't want your people there. <laughs> Wait, 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 how many people coming? And your sister too? <laughs> Expectation and disappointment. John's question is a request. <laughs> that's wrapped in a demand and it's almost a command and you know there is a difference between a request a demand and a command it's almost as if if you look at it as John is demanding Jesus to show up and tell me what you up to look at it <laughs> You know, you, 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 you know, at the intersection of expectation and disappointment, I come to tell somebody, just in case you dare, uh -huh. that Jesus will not show up and tell you what he's up to. <laughs> it would not be faith if he told you what he was up to. And we, I wish I had y'all with me. And we walk by faith, right. hallelujah, and not by sight. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> he can't show us everything. That means we wouldn't have faith, Cynthia, to believe. We, we got to trust God with what we can't see. And when he finally, watch this, when he finally answers us, we need to come to his house. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. I said when he finally come through and help us, we need to get to his house 
and celebrate what he's done for us. Anybody here <laughs> had a time in your life where you couldn't see your way? God worked it out for you just fine. Matter of fact, when he got through, it was better than you thought it would ever be. That's the time you need to come to his house and give him some praise just like the psalmist. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Listen, listen, I, I see some of us, I'm going to say this might make you mad. I'm almost finished. I see some of us, man, when we worshiping, yeah, I, I don't know whether you ain't got no beds at home, where you couldn't get no sleep. I don't, I don't know if you're on medication. I, I, it's still early. I see some of y'all just don't be paying no attention, talking and carrying on and acting like ain't nothing going on. And I be wondering sometimes, you know, even if your world is upside down, you know, even if you ain't feeling your best, he got you here. He woke you up this morning. He, he's still giving you health and gave you a little bit of strength. Yeah, though, 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 though things ain't going your way. Oh, yeah. He, he, he seems to still be blessing you. You ain't putting your hat on your feet. You ain't hearing me. You ain't putting your shoes on your head. You still got a reasonable portion of your health and your strength. You, you, you got strength enough to raise your hand. Matter of fact, why don't you raise them right now? Yeah, and open up your mouth and at least say, Lord, thank you. Yeah, thank you for this allowing me to be where I am. Yeah, because praises go up. Blessings come down. Yes, I've been disappointed, but God has been good to me. Yes, I've had needs, but he made ways for me out of no way. Yes, I've had tears in my eyes, but every day ain't been too bad. Yes, I've been stressed and strained. Yes, I wish things was better than the way they are, but I thank God they ain't no worse. Paul said, I have learned that whatever situation I'm in, therewith to be, because I'm learning to get along with it. I'm going to shout when I'm up. I'm going to shout when I'm down. I'm going to shout when I'm happy. I'm going to shout when I'm sad. When I got money, I'm going to give him some praise. When I'm broke, <laughs> I'm still going to praise him. When my friends are with me, I'm going to praise him. And if don't nobody else want to praise him, I will. If nobody else want to lift up holy hands, I will. If nobody else want to celebrate him, I will. If nobody else want to give him any thanks, want to give him any praise, I'm going to say hallelujah, hallelujah, because in spite of my mistakes, I wish that I could undo. I owe him praise. God has been good to me. I said God has been good to me. And my disappointment, hallelujah, sometimes turns me off. But I want you to know, I don't care how disappointed I am. I know who he is. I'm a testimony of who God is. I know who woke me up this morning. I know who healed my body. I know who makes ways for me. I know 
I know who my redeemer is. Yes, I know he healed the sick. I know he raises the dead. I know he keeps sinners from going to hell. I know. And I don't mind testifying about what God does because I know who he is. But let me tell you something. <laughs> God, I know who he is. But God doesn't always do what he can. That'll stop the shout. I said, God doesn't always do Reverend, what he can. He doesn't always do what he can. And because, Reverend, he don't always do what he can, that disappoints me. I'll stop you right there. Geraldine, that's what. Y'all ain't with me. That's. I know who he is. I know what he can do. But because he don't do all that he can. That disappoints me, Sterling. See, because I'm just like David. I'm just like John. Sometimes I want God to kill my enemy. What they doing with a new home and they ain't serving him. And I'm giving them all the honor, glory, and praise. Y'all ain't got to say nothing now. They children always successful. And I'm putting all I can in the mind. And it look like they're going nowhere fast. Y'all ain't hear me. Let me tell you something. You see, envy is a terrible thing. I hope y'all listening to me. I wish we could talk about this tomorrow. Jealousy is a terrible thing. But listen to this. But questions that are raised by the faithful are not born out of envy. And they're not born out of jealousy. August, they're born off the fact that life is just not fair. Good people suffer and stay sick a long time. And folk who don't even go to church never get a headache. It's not fair. I'm sorry I'm going here. This is why I had to come back and do this. Putin is, is massacring all those people in Ukraine for no reason. Dropping bombs on malls while people are, are, are shopping. Just killing for no reason. Yeah, yeah, and 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 then and then and then and then and then, and then, and then, and then telling the West, threatening the West, that I dare you to get involved. I dare any of y'all to try to stop y'all ain't hearing me. Stop me from what I'm doing because I'll cause a nuclear war. He need to die. Excuse me. That's, that's how I feel. He, he need to be gone instantly. The other day I watched the news and a woman pushing her baby in, the, in New York in her baby carriage, three-month-old baby, and a Negro came and shot her in the head. When they catch him, he need to die. It ain't fair. Excuse me, Mr. Police. Walking in the school, massacring babies and shooting them. 
killing people in churches, walking in schools, and you talking about having a trial for them. They should have been dead. Babies, y'all ain't got it. I know folk watch. I shouldn't be saying this. I'm sorry. Don't arrest me for attempted <laughs> wanting to kill folk. But that's how I feel. Baby sick of cancer in hospitals, children hospitals, and hospitals all over the land. Babies ain't had a chance to live. Ain't never bothered nobody. And hear these folk out on the street selling dope. Pants hanging over their butt, shooting and killing and robbing and fighting. Life ain't fair. <laughs> I knew I'd cry. I had to get a shout before it ended up. Life ain't fair. But I learned, and I'm going to close. Lonnie, that God <laughs> lets his sun shine. On the just, I, I mean, I'm still saved after all I say. I'm just telling you what's in my heart. Yeah. He still let the sun shine yeah. on the just yeah. and the unjust. God <laughs> lets the rain fall upon the righteous and the unrighteous. Failed expectations is at the heart of every disappointment. Jesus, and I'm through. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus came to be with us. This is going to be hard. But he did not come to please us. God is with us, and Jesus came for us, but still, and he did not come to please us. I wish we could talk about this. I want y'all to go barbecue. You see, Jonah's, I mean, Jonah's disappointment. <laughs> He, he got disappointed because God told him to go preach in Nineveh. And he went to Joppa. And a storm came. Y'all know they caught him in the hull of the ship, threw him in the wells, fishes, big fish mouth. And when he got out, God talked to him and asked him, why didn't you go and do what I told you to do? Now, see, y'all may not know, but Nineveh was responsible for Jonah's family's death. So Jonah said, I didn't go to preach because I know if I preach repentance, you was going to forgive them. And he didn't want, I'm talking about a preacher. Can I just not hoop and talk to you? I'm talking about a preacher who, who said, I ain't preaching to them because they might get saved. And they the one that killed my friend. I ain't preaching to Putin. He can go to hell. But God didn't come to please us. I wish y'all was understanding me and not getting mad to talk about this later. And y'all gonna talk about this later in a bad way, I feel. <laughs> I, I, they gonna have their own pew perspective. <laughs> Elijah got disappointed. Because he had preached to 850 prophets. And then after he did it, he ran from Jezebel. And then told God to come kill me. 
Because I'm the only one that's speaking your word. And God told him, you ain't the only one. <laughs> I got 450 more prophets that ain't even bowed to Baal. And I can imagine in Elijah's mind, well, why the heck you sent me up there by myself? Can I just talk slow? <laughs> God did not come to please us. <laughs> Elisha, y'all remember him? Him and his young servant, when they was in that cabin, Sterling, Elijah was cool and comfortable. But the servant that looked and tried to check things out, he looked around and saw the army surrounding the house. He said, we're in trouble. He's sitting there smoking a the cigar. And he came and said, don't you know what's going on? Can't you see what's happening? Elisha said, it's more with us than it is with them. And then he said, Lord, open his eyes that he can see what I see. That's a bad way to have to recognize you're going to be. But God didn't come to please you. <laughs> let me let y'all go. Uh, he, he didn't come to please us. And then he didn't come to answer to us. And I'm through for real. I say he didn't come to answer to us. Some of us want God to explain. Yeah. Why'd you take my brother? Why is this? Why? Took my mama. Why? Job was the richest man in the East. And you know what happened to him? <laughs> he lost everything. And when he lost it, Chris, he said, I wish I, I, I could talk to him. I got some things I want to know. Some questions I want to ask. And he went out there like he was Al Capone. All messed up already. It's talking about God. God. Where are you? <laughs> God don't owe us no answers. I know we ain't liking this. But I'm through. God ain't came to answer for you. Why your husband treating you like he treated you? You married him. God messed around, took everything Job had. Took his riches, took his ten children. Took his health, had balls on his head to his feet. His wife, sweet girl, came, looked at him and said, why don't you cuss God and die? And Job, after, after having that, some thoughts about what was going on, Job said, when disappointments come, we can't fall out with God. If, 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 if he's been good to you, I wish I had you. I'm through. I'm finished. If he's been good to you, and then stuff start happening, because disappointments come, don't mean you bail out. Job said, I ain't bailing out. The Lord give it. The Lord taketh. Bless it. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless it. I just came to talk to somebody who, who was at the intersection of expectation and disappointment. And your questions have made you disappointment. Because it ain't because of what you know. Y'all need to say something. You know what God done brought you through. You know what he done brought you out of. You know he's already healed you before. You know he made a way a little while ago when you didn't have a way. You know he saved somebody that you needed to be saved that couldn't nobody save him but him. And now you going through something come to tell you bless it bless it bless it bless it bless it look at that disappointment and say I bless you hallelujah cause trouble ain't gonna last always I'm coming out bless it Bless it. Tell your sickness, bless you. Bless it. with somebody else. Bless it! Bless it. The door church, I'm through. Bless it! The intersection of expectation and disappointment. Don't let doubt and questions or disappointment get in your way because you know who God is. Bless it. Something will happen if you bless it. Ask Job about it. <laughs> when Job blessed it, God gave him back more. I'm talking to somebody. Bless it. Bless it. I'm broke. Bless it. Because money is coming. Bless it. God didn't come to please us. He didn't come to make us happy. He came to make us holy. So through the bumps and bruises, 
that it takes to get there. Diane, bless it. Every time you get knocked down, bless it and get back up. Quit questioning God. Don't think he owe you nothing. Just get on up and say, thank you. Oh. Lord, church is open. Anybody here? I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust till I die. Oh, yeah. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on. I'm going to stay on until I die. How disappointed. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat every, everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody till I die. Father in heaven, we come now, Lord, as always, pausing first off to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for being so good, so kind, so merciful, and so loving unto us, each and every one, oh God. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for looking beyond fault every day and meeting need, oh God. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for on last night as we slept and slumbered, oh God, not recognizing and realizing that danger was lurking all about. But you gave charge to two centurions to look after us, one named Grace and one named Mercy. So we say thank you, oh God, for another day's journey. We thank you, O oh Lord, for what we've heard here on this day, O oh Heavenly Father, for helping us, O oh God, through your man of God to understand when we get to that crossroad, O oh Heavenly Father, of expectation, O oh God, and disappointment, O oh God, to recognize and realize, O oh God, that it's not about us, O oh God, but it's all about you, O oh Heavenly Father, to help us, O oh God, to understand that as long as we hold to your unchanging hand, O oh God, you'll give us that measure of faith, O oh God, to overcome, O oh God, those disappointment moments, oh God. You'll give us that measure of faith, oh Heavenly Father, to help us to make it on a little bit further as this thing called life tries to hold us down. You'll give us, oh Heavenly Father, if we just hold on to it, oh God, your unchanging hand. That measure of faith we need, oh God, to keep climbing a little bit higher, oh God, to keep telling you, oh Heavenly Father, if nobody else will go send me, Lord, I'll go into the vineyard because there's still work to do, oh God. 
We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, on this day, O oh God, for enlightening us, O oh God, and exposing to us, O oh God, some of our own thoughts and some of those old feelings we harbored in our heart that we tried to hide, O oh God. I thank you for giving us an open door, O oh God, to express them openly, O oh Heavenly Father, and then, O oh God, to allow you to come in and fix us, O oh God. Lord, on this day, O oh Heavenly Father, the first Sunday in July, O oh God, over halfway through 2022, O oh Heavenly Father, Look how you've kept us, oh God, thank you. Look how you've made a way, oh God, thank you. Look how you've kept us, oh Heavenly Father, in a right mind, thank you, Lord. So much going on all around, oh God. We ask, oh Lord, that you touch those in hospital rooms and nursing homes, oh God. Give them that same understanding, oh God, because many times laying in those beds, oh God, no one calling, nobody stopping by, nobody dropping off a card, oh God. They're meeting up with disappointment, oh God, but touch their minds right now, oh Lord. Let them know, oh God, you didn't bring them or us this far to leave us, but you're taking us every step of the way, oh God. Lord, continue to mold us, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, it's my prayer on this first Sunday in July, oh God, that you would look upon each and every one of us under the sound of my voice, oh God. See us as your clay, oh Heavenly Father. If there are any imperfections in us, which there are, oh God, I'm asking that you would break us right now, oh God. Take us as the potter takes the clay, oh God. Reshape us, remold us, build us back up, and then, oh God, if need be, break us again, oh Heavenly Father. Shape us and mold us, oh God, and turn us into those earthly vessels, oh Heavenly Father, that you could use, oh God. Continue to do that until you're able to look at us and go, this is my beloved son, my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. We love you on today, oh God. As you bless, oh God, We'll be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. It's in your darling son Jesus' name, we sign, seal, and deliver this petition unto you. Thank God and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. I ain't say put your hands together for me. I say put your hands together for the Lord. Ain't God good? I said ain't God good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Was not our hearts burning as the man of God spoke to us by the wayside? See, maybe that didn't hit some of y'all, but he was preaching to McQueen today. He was talking to me today with their desp- that, that disappointment piece. He was talking to me today. I know y'all ain't had no disappointments in your life, see, but you ain't had no heartaches. You ain't had no what you thought was going to happen, and then something different happened. After they told you what was going to happen, it didn't happen. Something different. Y'all ain't with me yet. And if it had not been for God who was on our side, some of y'all ain't had a loved one that you just knew was going to be with you forever. Because that's how we think. But God saw fit to bring them on home. And you sat there and said, why me, God? Why my mama? Why my daddy? Why my sister? Why y'all ain't y'all see y'all? I wish it was a few perspective tomorrow because y'all need some more of this. This was an understanding piece today, y'all. I'm leaving here today with a little bit better understanding about some things when it comes to me. God already understands himself. I'm coming to a better understanding about some things about McQueen and my way of thinking and how I start, have, have to start formulating my thought process and how I need this important to get up every day and say, Lord, Don't just order my steps, order my thoughts. Don't just make the pathway right for me, oh God, but take control, oh God, and send me down the road. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is Bishop London. We hope you've enjoyed the services. And if you have, we want you to know that we're interested in you. And if you want to get connected with Christ, If you want to know how to get closer to the Lord, if you want to belong to a church family, we want to be able to help you. So we're asking you, if you're interested, won't you call 313-523-8729. We're not trying to get members of the church, but we're trying to get you connected to Christ. And if you'd like to be connected to Christ and you'd like to be a member of a church, we'll get you connected to a church in wherever you live. But the most important thing, we don't want this day to go by without you getting closer to the Lord. We want you to know him in the pardon of your sin. So call us, if you would, at 
523-8729. God bless you, and we love you.